It's no secret that Cape May has its share of ghost stories and ghosts. People have been coming here since the late 1600s, whether they were going up to Delaware to Philadelphia or going to Town Bank right down the way. But there is one beach that many people say is haunted, where at night or during the day you can see people walking up and down, particularly one man. And today we're going to tell his story. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. The Cape May we know today is quite different than what it used to be. Today it is seen as an island due in part to the Cape May Canal. But this Cape May Canal wasn't always there. It was the early 1940s and World War II was starting to get worse. While the United States wasn't in the war yet, they were still preparing for it. As factories started manufacturing weapons for the Allies via the Lend-Lease Act, coastal towns were getting prepared to see German U-boats. The Germans knew that the US were supplying these weapons, and they went out of their way to stop it by sinking merchant ships off of the Atlantic coast. This time around, the U.S. had to come up with a way to allow these ships to pass safely from the Delaware all the way up to Philadelphia. So to create this safe channel, they created the Cape May Canal, which eventually created Cape Island. This meant that any property that was standing in the way of the proposed canal had to be destroyed. One of those properties was half of today's Higby's Beach. Prior to the 1940s, this was a tent village. Folks would drive down for the day, camp out on the beach, pack up their car, and head out. Prior to this though, this area was rich in legend, as it was believed to be a former anchorage for pirates who would come ashore. There was another lore though, that this beach had been haunted by a mysterious ghost who would show themselves in a foggy summer's night. While there isn't really much proof to this haunting, there is some evidence that there used to be a grave right on the beach. To understand this grave, you would need to understand who the beach was named for. Joseph Higby was a ship pilot who would help move ships up the Delaware Bay into Philadelphia. Together with his brother Thomas, they purchased that land in 1823, which had a farm and a hotel on it. The Hermitage Hotel wasn't anything too special, but it did offer amazing views of the bay and the sunset. This hotel doesn't exist today, but if you were to look on a map, one would put the hotel right next to the Cape May Canal. Since Higby was a ship pilot, he would spend his off time on this beach looking at the ships as they went by. For 50 years, Higby and his brothers stood on these shores until Higby passed in 1872. In his will, his brother Thomas was entitled to the full deed that was on the land, the hotel, a tavern, and the beach. Thomas, who loved the area that he and his brother built up, wanted to forever stay on this property. After his death in 1879, he gave his entire estate to his niece, Etta Gregory. While this wasn't technically his niece, she treated him with much respect after his brother died. In Higby's will, he made one request that Gregory granted. He wanted to be buried on the property overlooking the bay and the land that he loved. Shortly after his death in 1879, a grave was dug and Higby was buried with a large marble slab on top. Fast forward a few decades and Gregory passed in 1837. This is where things start to change. When Gregory passed in 1837, Thomas's final resting spot was changed. Gregory's will requested that her uncle Tom was unearthed and moved to be buried with her at the Cold Spring Cemetery. This of course was done without the wishes of Tom who wanted to stay on his land. This is where things start to get spooky. Some believe that Thomas was angry about this move and at night he goes back to the beach. There have been some stories posted on Facebook of visitors explaining what they saw or heard while they were back in the woods. One said he saw an old man walking in an area that he couldn't possibly gotten into due to his age. Another visitor said they heard an old man yelling but turn around and couldn't find anyone. With no concrete proof of this paranormal activity, we'll have to leave this as another Cape May legend. Though there is one question we have to ask. Where is the grave? 
According to local historians, his grave is still somewhere on this beach, which would account for him walking down here and being seen by so many people. But where is his grave? Well, right now, we're going to go ahead and look for it ourselves. Let's go. Our search for what remains is going to take place right over here in the woods. You see, going back very, very far back, this all used to be woods. Over time, of course, things changed. Houses were built. There was marsh. There was landfills, so on and so forth. And so a lot of people actually don't realize there's actual woods back here, which is why people say if you're going to look for this grave, you're better off doing it in the wintertime. That way, the leaves aren't on there and it's not, you know, kind of hidden. So we're going to start in this path and kind of just make our way around. Hopefully we don't get lost because it's currently 2.30 and because it is kind of ugly out. It's a lot darker than usual, but uh, let's jump right in and get started. Now here's the deal. I'm not expecting to find a single thing back here. One, because you're talking about something that was built such a long time ago. I can't even believe that part of it's still standing, if it is still standing. And also because there are so many paths, this thing is not marked online. There is barely any photos of it. I think we might be the first, like maybe YouTube channel even do a video about this kind of thing. So, you know, <laughs> we may be searching for a while because I, I really, it's, I mean, it's all growth. You can get a good understanding of what the situation is. This is how it is throughout the entire trail. So as you're walking, you'll see some posts like this indicating the trail, but that's about it. And you're just gonna keep walking and walking and walking. And because it is unmarked, <laughs> you have no sense of direction. Could it be that way? Could it be that way? Could it be that trail or, or could it be that way? No, we just came from that way. So. It's like going out to every single end, looking deep inside, figuring out, no, it's not over here, and then going back. I've been walking for about 35 minutes, and I finally stumbled upon something that kind of stuck out a little bit. Remember that this thing has been here for a very long time. It was built at a time where graves were built very different than today, and we're in the middle of the wooded area. I found brick. There's brick going this way, Going this way, there's even more brick down here. See some brick here and here. And as you go in more, there's a piece of brick here and there. And I feel like we're getting close. Another brick here going that way. Because why else would there be brick back here? Unless it was part of that hotel or maybe something else. But I feel like we have to be getting close. It makes no sense for there to be brick back here. But looking and looking, I don't really see anything man-made nothing sticking out i mean we're kind of getting close to things but nothing that screams there's a grave back here just yet not to say that this is a sign to get out of here but it says evil is watching or awake that's not terrifying <laughs> um i don't see any evil no, it's funny how people keep on saying you see people. I haven't seen anyone yet. In all the research that I saw, which were just really old maps, it showed that his grave would have been off of like where the parking lot is in Cape May, or right there on that main road once you come through West Cape May, and you hang a left on a road. But that road doesn't exist anymore. At least that one that would have been an unpaved, unmarked road. And so I kind of just assumed that it was this going that way. And just from talking to a few people, they're like, yeah, it would have been like into the woods, like 20 feet on your right. So I've been looking and looking and looking. We found those bricks. I found a little bit of metal. I can't really find too much from that point forward. There was one point where I found like a raised area, which looked like at one point used to house like either railroad tracks or something very sturdy. That could have been something closer to like a, a water tower or something like that, but that was about it. It is possible that this could have been the old road. You see where this kind of ends? And maybe that's the way to go. So we really don't have much sunlight left, but um, let's make our way that way. This to me looks like an old road. Look how wide it is. And the trees are not really growing on top of it. 
So we're going to follow this down to the end and you know, look to our right a little bit and see if it's in there. I know we're so close. I've read what other people said, and this looks like it has to be nearby. They've talked about a clearing, which the wooded area is over there. Here's a massive clearing. A little pond here, and then a little pond over there, and then a lot of really, really old trees. It has to be nearby. It's getting just a little too dark to continue, so we're going to stop here. But I'm not going to say that this was a useless search because I spoke to other few historians that sent me pictures and things. Some people have stumbled upon a gate and a foundation to something, but they don't know what it is, and it was about nine years ago. So who knows if that's even still around? I think the best thing we found were those bricks that either belong to a house or belong to that gravestone slash graveyard that was there. But for right now, we're going to leave it at that. Now, we always talk about ghost stories, and one of the ghost stories that kind of haunted me a little bit, knowing that I had to do this video by myself, was that this girl was telling me that in the 70s, she used to bike down here to the beach, and she would tie up her bike in that parking lot. And as she would go back to her bike, unhook it, and go to bike away, that he would be standing in the distance watching her as she biked away. And now it's kind of scary for me just a little bit because I'm now entering that lot by myself. Though I don't see anyone, so I think we're... I think we're in the clear. <laughs> Even though we were unable to find his grave, I think the legend still stands that the next time you come to this beach, you might see something from beyond the grave. Anyway, I'm Joey. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you on the beach. See you later. Bye.